This is the matter of Ravello versus Sangalaza, D18572482C and R eighteen two zero five four one six R. The parties are present. Counsel, your appearances for the record. Good morning, Your Honor. Sean Lytle, one one six four zero on behalf of plaintiff Nicholas Ravello, who is present. Pamela Lawson, bar number five zero four four, for Karen Sangalaza, who is present. Good morning. This is on for case management conference. Return from FMC. Everybody have a seat. And for mom's motion for temporary orders, uh, dad's opposition and counter motion, and mom's reply. Uh, we'll talk about the case management setting at the end of today and set dates in the future. Um, council, I see that we went to mediation. Um, it looks like an agreement was not reached. Uh, Mr. Lytle, do I have a financial disclosure form from your client? I don't see I it. I just got the hard copy from him today. He was getting, waiting on some records from Wisconsin, and so okay. we'll be filing that this afternoon. All right, so my order regarding his financial disclosure form is that it be filed within a week of today's hearing date. Mom, this is your motion for temporary orders. It looks like, is Julian four months old? Is my math right? Yes. All right, Ms. Lawson, go ahead. Okay, Your Honor. Set forth pretty much everything in our written papers, um, and uh, so I won't regurgitate it to you. Other than I just want to hit the high points of the uh, timeline of this whole matter. Basically, the parties met in May of 2017. Uh, my client was employed in two jobs, saving money for school. She is a college student with two semesters left to finish to get her degree. She's also planning on going to uh, graduate school, probably law school. Not long after she met the uh, plaintiff, she became pregnant. Um, at shortly thereafter, Dad talks Mom into returning to his home in uh, Wisconsin, which is where he was from and where he lives. Uh, Mom goes, she quits her job. She becomes, when she's in Wisconsin, um, she's isolated, her car's not working. Um, she's at home all the time, and he's running around with his friends at night and sleeping all day. Um, Mom reaches out to his mother to try to see if she can talk to him to get him to be a little more responsible. He doesn't work. He doesn't have a job. Um, Mom leaves Dad in, in uh, December, and she returns home and lives with her parents. She returns to school. She uh, gets a job because she knows it's going to cost some money to get the babies coming. Um, about two months later, Dad comes to Las Vegas, and he wants to reconcile with Mom, and he talks to Mom and her parents, and he promises he's going to act responsibly and take care of her. So they try again. In March 9th, the parties lease an apartment. There's three parties on that lease. There's Dad, Mom, and uh, Dad's aunt. Dad returns to his irresponsible lifestyle, sleeping all day, going out at night with his friends. Um, he, the exhibits that we attach show the different times uh, that Mom tried to reach out to his friends, please send him home, he's still partying. Child's born April 25th, 2018. Um, she stays uh, with her parents for a few weeks and they decide to reconcile so she goes to the apartment. May, um, she writes, uh, I guess the parties agree that they're going to have a schedule for who, because the babies, you know how babies are, they wake, they sleep and then they wake up about every three hours and they want to eat. So they have a schedule, dad just can't deal with it alone. He wants mom there when he has the baby. Um, first incident is that dad, uh, the baby's crying, mom's not in the room, baby's crying, and then he stops crying and mom goes to check and she sees dad stuffing the blank in the baby's mouth. And she says, what are you doing? And he says, um, that's the only way I can keep him from crying. Apparently, I don't know, but apparently mom doesn't um, use pacifiers. And uh, he said that's the only way he could keep the baby from crying. A few days later, May 21st, um, he leaves the baby unattended while mom's in the restroom. He leaves the baby on the bed, jumps over the balcony, disappears. 21st is a busy day. He later comes back with the police. He wants mom out, mom and the baby, out of the apartment. He wants to move back in. Please say she's on the lease. She has a right to be here. He packs a suitcase and he leaves. Same day, 
He returns in the afternoon with three large friends and tells mom she needs to move out with the baby. She refuses. She calls the police, files a report. May 31st, mom's father is visiting his daughter and the baby. Dad comes back to the apartment again, tries to get mom and the baby out. Mom thinks he's acting kind of weird. He might be under the influence of something, and she's starting to become a little bit fearful of him. June 16th, Dad and a friend enter the apartment. Dad packs more clothes, tries again to get Mom to come out. He leaves. Mom applies for child support with the uh, family support center. Dad gets served. He becomes irate. He comes over. He's violently angry. He throws a bowl, just misses her, threatens her with a chair. She calls 911. Dad runs to the uh, guest room, I guess it is, and jumps over the balcony. Uh, the police intercept him, but since there's no physical damage, they don't arrest him. Um, Mom has not changed the locks. She's not, she's never denied him entrance. When he does come to pack his clothes and stuff, he never checks on the baby, never asks about the baby, never asks to hold the baby. Um, all he wants really is Mom out of the apartment. Mom should be awarded uh, temporary primary custody of this child, and Dad's visitation should be um, supervised, at least initially, till he takes some classes. He's refused any kind of instruction on the care of an infant. Um, he has no job. He's a self-proclaimed gambler that we don't have an FDF, so we don't know what he makes gambling, but she lived with him for a while, and she said he loses a lot more than he makes. The uh, visitation should be uh, supervised because that is somewhat of uh, a danger to the child until he learns how to take care of an infant. Supervised He's... by who, counsel? Pardon? Supervised by who? What? Supervised. I'm what, sorry. Instruction? Yeah. No, who should be the supervisor? Who should supervise oh, his visitation? I'm not sure. That's a little bit of a problem. Maybe uh, Donna's house until we find somebody. I, he doesn't have any family here. He's actually who's his wisconsin. aunt that's on the lease she doesn't live here no she lives in wisconsin oh, okay they couldn't um rent the apartment without her because nobody has any any uh enough verifiable funds okay anything else um we're asking for temporary uh or not temporary primary uh preliminary attorney's fees mom's paying this herself She's working, well, right now she's not working, but she's looking for a job. Um, and she has family that will watch the uh, uh, baby when she does um, uh, get a job. Um, so she, she can't meet him on an equal plane without some help. I don't know what um, he's paid his attorney. I know I'm t I've reduced the fees tremendously and uh, she's paying payments. Um, she needed the help. I wanted to provide it, and uh, but it would certainly help in the ways of discovery and, and um, evening this, e leveling this field, if we could get some preliminary, um, at least as much as he's paid his lawyer in a thirty days. Your Honor, that was a that was a long and detailed and, and really fantastic story. Unfortunately, most of it is not true. Um, <clears throat> We, we've also laid out the facts, and I'm not going to belabor them. And what we've done, uh, in contrast to the, what the defendant in this case has done, is we've actually laid out the defendant's own words. And, and she's doing exactly what she said she was going to do uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, something snapped the moment this child was born. Everything went off the rails. Up until that point, there was no indication that anything was wrong. Um, and we have serious, serious concerns about mom's mental health. My client has not been arrested or cited. There have been no calls made to CPS or any of these things like that. Indicate, and they make some allegations about his criminal record, and you indicate he did have a DUI three years ago. Is that right? Is three years right? I believe it was about three years okay, ago. Okay, but the, he doesn't have Before any... Before he ever met the, the defendant. It, they indicate he had a domestic violence and some other violent criminal record. Is that true? He, pled, he did plead no contest about ten years ago to... Uh, uh, in a case in Wisconsin, and he was... Uh, what was the nature of that case? 
So <clears throat> my understanding is that it was a dispute with his college girlfriend. He was. He was so that college. was a, the domestic violence case. Yep. He okay. was 23 years old at the time. Um, he pled no contest. He got no jail time and a year of probation, which he served with no problem. Um, and that was the end of that. Okay. Um, as far as this stuffing a blanket in the baby's mouth, that that never happened. The, the one one of the true things that was in the story, from what I understand, is that uh, for some reason the. Uh, the defendant it has some, some deep-seated objection to the use of any sort of pacifier with this child. And so the, the child does occasionally just grab whatever is present and chew on it because that's what babies do. And so there was an incident where the baby was chewing on the corner of the baby's blanket. Um, and it, at the time, it didn't appear to be any sort of issue. But now, you know, now that we're in litigation over this, it's become, oh, he, he was abusing the child. He was stuffing a blanket. Mom, what's going throat. on with the pacifiers? Um, at the time, the baby was three weeks old, and I fully breastfeed, so he wasn't a fussy baby. He, didn't, he only cried when he needed to be changed, fed, or he needed to sleep. And um, I, I didn't give a pacifier, because if he's crying, then I can go ahead and give him milk, or um, I check to see, does he need to be changed? He, he's not a, he wasn't a fussy baby, and he was only three weeks old. Then. So that's when he was three weeks old. What about right now? Right now, he's four months. Um, he... He's not fussy. He's not a. Fussy. I don't. Is he using pacifier? What? What's? I tried to give him a pacifier, but he. Rejects. I mean, I don't really care. I just need to know what what's been happening. Uh, yeah, I try. I asked. Not that I don't him. care. That came out wrong. Not that I don't care. If you want to give him a pacifier or not, that's none of my real business. But. Yeah, I've asked my doc, his doctor, and breastfeeding counselors about it, but they said it's normal with breastfed children. They usually don't take pacifiers until they're older. So, um, Sorry, counsel, to no, interrupt. I just needed to clear that up in my mind. It's quite all right. I mean, there was a representation made that when he came back to Vegas, what, what, uh, what counsel said was that he, he promised that he's going to act right and take care of her. Well, if that's a promise he made, then it's a promise that he, that he has kept. Uh, we just heard from, from counsel that she's not working, she's finishing up school. He is still paying for this apartment where she and her parents, who are not on the lease, are living with this child. He has not seen this child in seven weeks because she and her parents refused to allow him access to his own home. This is a mess of epic proportions. And if you look at the text messages that we attached, it all sort of makes sense. It all makes sense. She's telling him, you're never going to see this kid. I'm going to make sure this kid hates you. You're, you're, you, I'm going to sell all your stuff. I mean, the text messages are, are, are to me, compelling evidence of, at the very least, some, some postpartum issues and, at worst, some pathogenic parenting. Well, you asked for a psych eval, and so yes. that's what I was trying to get to, counsel. Why do you think that she needs the psych eval? You, you think that this type of behavior um, that you see in the text messages was not present prior to the birth of the child? Correct. So you think that it might be postpartum issues? Or, Is or, that... or the early stages of pathogenic parenting, Your Honor. When I see in, in writing, this child is going to hate you, this child is never going to like you, uh, I'm going to make sure of it. I mean, that, that's pathogenic parenting 101. And again, until the, the birth of Julian, there was no conflict between these parties. They were getting along just fine. Um, he consented, my client consented to, to coming back to Las Vegas, even though all of his family and friends are, in fact, in Wisconsin so that he could be here with her and, and support her and take care of the baby. And the minute the baby was born, essentially, um, everything changed. And we start getting these unsubstantiated uh, allegations of, of him being violently angry and, and all these sorts of things. If the court's comfortable with it, I mean, I know, I know that typically what's good for the goose is good for the gander. My client is, is willing to engage in, a, in an evaluation and whatever counseling might be necessary as well. Um, but something is something is terribly amiss in this case, um, and what we have is a very strange situation where my, my client is basically, without any basis in fact at all, is being deprived not only of access to his own home, but of any contact with this child, um, and that's not acceptable. That needs to change, and it needs to change today. So, counsel, what do you think the appropriate order is uh, temporarily? So, temporarily, um, her, her parents need to be out of that house. They're not on the lease. They have no right to be there. Um, if she wants to stay there on her own, then we're going to have to work that out. But he needs to at least have access to his child and to his home. 
to at the very least go in and, and, and in an unmolested way to collect whatever necessities he needs so that he, you know, he's, he's got a temporary housing situation somewhere else. But really, you know, he does, he, he wants, if she doesn't want to, uh, to get help, then he would like to be back in that apartment with that child. That, that's what he's seeking to do today. Okay, all right, thank you. Council, I'm a little bit concerned about these emails. Um, they're frightening. Um, bah ha ha, you're going to have a lonely, miserable Father's Day. You have no recent photos of Julian to post. Your friends can tell because I post him daily and he's clearly changed. Um, you screwed yourself over. I'm not a fool, but you are. I didn't make this baby on my own and I'm by no means going to make anything easy for you. And those are the ones I can repeat out loud. She would like to Oh, go ahead. On the yes, Your Honor. At the time, I was really hurting for my child. I, he, what he doesn't show is my text messages reaching out to him. Are you going to come see the baby? You know, are you going to help out, help me take care of this baby? Because he decided to leave on his own, and he never came by. He never asked me, how's the baby doing? Does he need anything? And it, as a, you know, new young mother, you see your child, and he doesn't have a father. You know, but you said that you would raise him to hate evil white people. It was, it was, at the time I was uh, very, very upset and hurt, but that's not how I raised him. I mean, he's half white, he's got a whole family. That's that, not what you say in your text right, messages. You not, say the other. Yeah, I, that was, that was very early when the baby was young. This, After that I stopped. The it. baby is still young. This is yeah. very difficult for me to read. I, I mean, after that, I've stopped contacting him because I'm no longer, you know, angry and upset. What I have to do is be twice the parent for the baby if, he's, if his father doesn't want to come see him. So some of these emails, he's asking to see the baby and how is the baby, and you're not responding. I, those, um, those text messages, if you look at it, um, I was looking at them, they were never sent. Like an iMessage. If a message is sent, it'll say sent, at the, delivered at the bottom. And I never received any of those messages. There was a time also when I didn't um, have a phone because I was paying attorney fees, you know, food and... Not the rent, stuff. though. No, not rent. Um, neither of us were paying rent at the time. But, um, you know, food, taking care of my baby, diapers, very expensive, toys, all kinds of things. Um, and I didn't have a phone for a few weeks, but my parents um, added me onto their account. Now I have a phone. Okay, anything else you want to tell me? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, I have a, a little um, issue of um, his actual residency. He has no ties except this baby to Nevada. Um, on information and belief, he has a Wisconsin driver's license. So would you like to remove the case to Wisconsin? Pardon? Would you like to remo remove the case to no, Wisconsin? No, he would stay here, but he has filed, as he filed it, as a resident well, of Nevada. Was he here the six weeks prior to the filing? But you also have to be a bona fide resident and remain, want to remain in the state. You want him to file it in Wisconsin? Yeah. I'll this grant is, your motion and we'll send it to now, Wisconsin right now. This is the home state of the baby. The baby oh, okay, so then here. why do I need to hear about his residency? Well, he doesn't have a... Um, I Personally, I think he's probably going to return to Wisconsin. He told uh, mom's dad he was going to return to Wisconsin. Okay. He has a home there. He has nothing here except the baby, which he's never made any attempt to see. Let's I mean, see, he's been in the house like he's like made five times. Several, several attempts to see him no, on the text no, no. messages. He's been in the house four or five times. He's never gone to see the baby in the house, in the room, when he's sleeping or anything else. He, he's, he's, he doesn't have a job. He's irresponsible. And I think he needs to take some classes. She doesn't have a problem with him visiting the child once he will show that he knows how to take care of an infant. He's saying, uh, the council said that the baby was, uh, babies chew on blankets. Not at three weeks they don't. They don't chew on blankets. Um, and then stop crying. Um, mom does say that she will permit a, a um, pacifier. The baby just doesn't want it. No, oh, I understand. I just needed to know what was going, you know, on, going and, on. And, uh, mom just 
doesn't didn't have a postpartum. She was angry with that. She left him in December. You can't say they were happy before. She's not been happy. Well, all, whether they're yeah. happy or not happy or who left who or whether you're mad, all that's irrelevant for today. No, I'm just replying to what he said because they were a happy couple and all of a sudden she has the baby now. I think so counsel was explaining why yeah. he's concerned about the psychological issues and why he, he made a request Correct. for a psychological evaluation. Um, I didn't take that as a remark as to you know their history or, or past. Oh, I kind of did because oh. it was in the. Pleadings. No, I and I, the, uh, the court needs to understand why um, when we ask for psych, anybody asks for psychological evaluation, why specifically? You know, it, is it? And, and he gave me what his concerns were that they're perhaps situational, um, rather than diagnosis that could go on yeah. for years is some, something different. So I, I needed to understand that allegation. Mm -hmm. uh, we also uh, would like to have a uh, drug test of dad. Dad, um, and it's legal now, marijuana, he uses pot, and my client um, says that he uses cocaine. He parties a lot, he goes out at night. And um, when he acts strangely around her, she thinks it's because he's under the influence. And she knows that he has taken both these drugs. So that's a um, uh, issue with us, is his drug use. Anything? Well, I mean, Your Honor, <laughs> again, my, my client is willing to do whatever he needs to do to have reasonable contact with his only child. Um, but in terms of, you know, I, I just, I, I'm baffled, frankly, in this situation where we have a, a defendant who with the support of her parents, and we included some text messages from her, her mother as well, who seems to be uh, participating in some of this as well, but we have a defendant who with her parents is essentially unilaterally declaring that I'm going to stay in this apartment, I'm gonna sell all your stuff, I'm gonna make sure this kid doesn't ever see you, and, and I'm going to make sure that your reputation and everything about your life is ruined. Meanwhile, he's the one paying the bills. I mean, he's the one, they can say all day long, he needs to get a real job. She doesn't have a real job either, but he's the one who's actually making sure that there's a roof over her head and over this child's head. I mean, it's, it, I, the, the mess that the, is being created by the defendant here is absolutely Okay, I need everybody to understand something now. I'm not going to order that you live together. So one right. person is going to live in that apartment, and the person who lives in the apartment is going to pay for the apartment and pay for all of the utilities until further order of this court, okay? So we're not, we're not just gonna live there and not pay for everything, okay? That, that's not happening, all right? I am going to order um, a civil standby for the plaintiff to obtain all of his property. We need to think about a time and a place that we can do that. Okay. I am very upset at these text messages. They're absolutely disgusting. horrible. I don't expect that type of behavior from you in the future. Please understand the following. That the state of Nevada has a preference for joint physical custody. A preference for joint physical custody means that's what they want in the vast majority of cases. In order to, for me to make an order that's different from joint physical custody, I have to make specific findings. Today I'm making a temporary order. I have to take into consideration a lot of things. Today, the age of your son is one thing that I take into consideration, but that strikes both ways, all right? He's very young and he needs to develop a bond with both parents. Um, and that bond being developed at this very young age is very important. Although I understand that he's been with you, mom, solely for a very long time. Dad hasn't been allowed to see him for some time. And your emails are clear that that was your intention you raise this child on your own and that you, you keep this baby to be your own and, and not his. Um, and I don't think counsel, I, any part of today has misinterpreted or exaggerated the nature of those text messages. They're horrible. You both will continue talking um, and communicating via talking parents. Dad, do you have mom's email address? Yes. Okay. And mom, will you tell us your email address on the record today so that we, we get the right one? Yes. What's uh, your email address?
that the one that you have? Yeah. All right. So he's going to set up the Talking Parents account within the next 24 to 48 hours, okay? I'm going to give you a flyer about that. Your counsel will help you and answer any questions you might have. Maybe you're going to get a request from Talking Parents. It's a free resource online to help parents communicate with each other. You two have a very small baby, and communication about his daily routine, how he's doing, how much he's eating, his diapers, everything you have to communicate about. You two can't communicate. The, these text messages I read are absolutely horrible. You are talking about a lot of other stuff and not this baby, okay? You are in a business relationship going forward. That is the business of raising Julian. I expect you to speak to each other like you speak to your coworkers and your supervisors. I understand that you're both not working now, but let's just imagine that you were, all right? I don't want to see the type of text messages that I have seen from you in the future. Horrible, okay? I need to set an order temporarily that creates visitation until a further order of this court. In the meantime, I'm going to order that the plaintiff take a newborn and infant care class through the county. That class is available free of charge, okay? I'm going to have you take that before your visitation starts. I think that will alleviate a lot of mom's concerns, okay? And it's something mom specifically requested. By making this order, though, I am not, and I don't want you to, um, hear that I am taking mom's allegations as true today, okay? I am moving forward out of an abundance of caution, okay? I've had many newborns, many it seems like, in my <laughs> lifetime, and, uh, it, it is always, um, beneficial to parents, um, of both genders to take classes or refreshers that help us know what the new, you know, sleep on the stomach, sleep, now it's on the back, by the way, but it's, you know, things change over time and it's important and we can only get information that benefits our child. That This class is available free of cost. I'm going to give you the flyer for that class in a moment um, before we leave today. Temporarily, we need to set up, I understand that both of you are not working. Mom, are you going to school now? Do you have a class schedule? Or are you getting ready? UNLV just started yesterday. Where are you? Um, I started classes yesterday. Okay, so what's your class schedule? What days are you going? I'm in class Monday through Thursday. Okay, tell me about that. Uh, Mondays and Wednesdays, I have class from... No, no, sorry. Mondays, I have class from 2.30 to 3.45. And then Wednesdays, I have an additional class. I have the same class plus... 5 to 8, uh, 5.30 to 8.15, and then uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, I have class from 11.30 to 12.45. So you're taking three classes? No, um, I'm taking six. I have three online. And then three online in addition to this. Okay. My order is that mom take over um, exclusive possession of that lease because dad's already moved out. Um, we'll set a time. It looks like the weekends are best. Either Saturday or Sunday of this coming weekend for the parties to schedule a civil standby. Um, and counsel, you'll speak to your client about that and how to schedule that and contact the uh, police department. The police department will stand by as he moves those items out of the house that are his. Okay? All right. Of the apartment. And then, what about items that we obtained together and gifts as well? So, this is not a divorce case, okay, where I uh, separate property, okay? So, um, if you would like to fight about that, you'll do so in front of another judge on another day. Um, but there are certainly um, items of clothing or personal items, his parents' wedding photo, things like that, that there's no concern about. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, Your Honor, um, my client came up before the apartment. Um, there's three people in this apartment. Um, plaintiff doesn't pay for the apartment either. His aunt does, or his mother. I'm not sure which one. Probably his aunt. So, so is she going to be moving now? Yeah, my client. You'll move out. She'll move out. Counsel. You'll move out by Saturday or Sunday. Whoa. Well, you've been living there and not paying yeah, for it days. for all this time. Ten days. Counsel? 
10 days from today. 10 days from today. All right. Um, she'll vacate the apartment, um, leaving behind his personal items. I can tell by the tone of these text messages and the tone of the motions, I need to say this. Do not get caught in the pettiness of who bought the TV, okay? There are more important things uh, at stake here. And if you want to fight about and send horrible messages to each other about a picture on the wall or a, a set of pots and pans, you be my guest, but understand it's not going to make me happy, all right? You have one priority, and it's your son and not all this other stuff, okay? So I, I implore you to behave as adults. Okay, so 10 days from today. Um, that being said, I think that the plaintiff will have more than enough time in those 10 days to get his... Uh, get that class taken care of. Council, you'll get, they get a little certificate from the county at the end of that class. You'll get that over to council. Um, you could, sure, you could file it with the court and serve. Absolutely, council. I think that's probably the easiest, all right? And then as soon as that's complete, I think we need to start visitation. Let's talk about all that baby furniture and, and, and what are we going to do with that? Now, is the baby sleeping in a crib or who bought it and what's going on with all that he said she can take all the baby furniture all right so and you and he'll replace what he needs all right thank you and so sir that'll give you some time to get some furniture and get the things that you need is the baby sleeping in a cradle is in a crib right now what um, I co we co-sleep because I breastfeed and he wakes up to feed like an hour two hours at night have you spoken to your doctor about this yeah and, and your doctor recommends this she says that if I'm able to do it then it's probably best um, and also which doctor said that um, her name is Anita Henderson okay the court's concerned about that and I'm gonna caution you right now co-sleeping is very deadly okay extraordinarily deadly hundreds of infants die every year I'm not I can't go that let that go unsaid the baby sleeps in his crib when he's with you all right I implore the both of you to speak to your pediatrician again about that statement and and reconsider your position okay um, I'm extraordinarily concerned that your doctor, whom you named on the record, told you to continue to co-sleep with a four-month-old. She didn't say it, but I, I, um, I brought it up to her. You know, these are my concerns with uh, breastfeeding, and he's constantly waking up at night to eat and eat and eat. And she said, well, if, you're, if you are comfortable and you're able to do it, then, you know, yeah, with caution, but keep him, yeah, I'm sorry, keep a watch on uh, what you do, but... It's common with uh, breastfed children that they uh, will wake up next to their mothers and feed. So I've had a conversation with her. Okay, my order is that you have another conversation with her at your next well check and reconsider this. You are at temporarily um, ordering joint legal custody. This is a legal custody issue. Mm -hmm. um, I'm real concerned about it. Uh, I, I want you to, to do a little bit more research and um, reconsider your position. Um, so do you have a crib for him? Yeah, a crib and a bassinet that I put him in during the day. Okay, and so, so you'll get all new furniture for the baby. You each will be responsible for the diapers and the wipes and the stuff. He's four months old now, but the next two months are gonna go really quickly and then he'll be eating solid food soon and, and all these things will be changing that's why I think you need to be in constant communication about his schedule what he's eaten what's what's happening with him on talking parents I'm gonna order um, a graduated schedule I think that it's appropriate um, it looks like on Mondays you have class 2 to 3 45 and then Wednesdays it goes to 8 15 is that right okay and so where are you living now is it close to where her apartment was or is it far away what is it it's in the vicinity. Uh, okay. Long, Pretty close. Long-term rental. Uh, okay. Um, so. I believe it's about two miles away. I oh, okay. Or I was. I was just yeah. making sure we weren't in yeah, Henderson no, and not, Summerlin, no, and I don't want the little baby in the the car no. for three hours right. to go back and forth. What I think is appropriate is that for um, at least the next month, um, on Mondays and Wednesdays, from one thirty through eight thirty. And we need to talk about that for a little bit so that we make sure we have enough time for travel time. 
that um, dad have the baby during that time, okay, when mom's at school, all right, and then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, that we carve out some time as well. So let me talk to you about your commute. I don't want to set you up for failure to be late or too early. So tell me, you said you have class at two. So what time do you need to leave to get to class? And do you want dad to come pick up the, where you don't know where you're gonna live yet, right? I, I do, with my parents. Um, they I, have another house? I thought they were they living. They don't live in the house. Okay, so they have a house? Yeah, they have, okay. they have a house. Is it close? Mm, it's not close, no, it's on the other side of town. Okay, so you, you're going to move in with them in 10 days? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we need to find a pickup and drop off point that's probably maybe, you know, in the middle so that you can uh, exchange the baby on those Mondays and Wednesdays and, and on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So let's talk about that. So where would work? What time is it at? Well, we, you're, you're going to class from 2 to 3.45 and then 2 to 8.15. So on Mondays and Wednesdays, I'm going to have him have the baby while you're in class. So does it make sense for you to drop off somewhere on your way to UNLV? And did I assume UNLV? Is it CSN? You tell me. Yes, it's UNLV. Okay. Um, and when I went to UNLV, it took me 45 minutes to get there and another 20 minutes to park and walk in. So I don't want to set you up for failure. I don't want to say 1.30, but you really need to get there early. Or you tell me. Uh, I need to... And we can have the receiving parent pick up. So that means dad can pick up from you at mom and dad's house. And then when you're done with school, you can pick up from him. Um, My clients have to do all transportation. Because his schedule, he makes his own schedule. Sorry? What? So what's your request? He says um, he'll, he'll accommodate what, what you want. What time pick the baby up on Monday and Wednesday? I'd rather drop him off just because of the car situation. What's the car situation? His car is... Uh, covered in cigarettes. Uh, it's just a very unsafe car for a child. Um, and uh, mine is clean, and, you know, it's, and I have the car seat, so I can drop him off. What time are you going to drop him off? I can drop him off on Mondays and Wednesdays at, uh, let's see, 12 I, You start school at 2. Yeah. So what time do you need to drop him off so that you can get to UNLV on time to park and go in and I don't know. Council, did they have the Scantrons anymore? Did they even do that? I don't know. Okay, so our meeting point, what would our meeting point be? You just said you want to do all the transportation right. and you want to drop them off at the house. So you oh, don't okay, get a meeting point if you want to do um, that. So I can drop them off at 1 o'clock. Okay, 1 o'clock on Monday and Wednesday. Okay, now do you want him to drop the baby off at your parents' house on Monday and Wednesday evenings? Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah, well, I've got a car seat. He has to get a car seat. Yeah, he's going to get Don't a car seat. Okay, so you're going to drop off. You get out of school at 8.15. What time will you be back at the house? By 9, right? Minutes. Yeah, by 9. Okay, so 9 p.m., he'll drop off on Mondays and Wednesdays, okay? All right. And then Tuesday and Thursday, you're in class 11.30 to 12.45. Is that right? Okay, so what you want to take the baby there on your way to school so do you want to drop the baby off at 10 30. that's an hour early yeah. yes okay so on tuesdays and thursdays the baby's going to get dropped off at 10 30. and then dad you're going to drop the baby back off to mom by 2 p.m okay council you're going to get this all typed up in an order so that we understand in the meantime i'm going to send the parties to fmc Okay, this schedule is a lot of back and forth, right? But baby's so little, okay? So it, this is a schedule that's created to be temporary, okay? This isn't a schedule we would have for a one-year-old, right? Okay, so I want you two to sit down in the same room with the mediator and come up with the schedule that works, okay? For the long term. You're not going to do that tomorrow. Although I'm going to issue the referral today, council, um, I'm totally fine if they wait 60 days or 90 days okay. um, to, to sit down. I think when, when time for mediation is really ripe, where they see that they can work together, I, we're going to be on a new path of new communication, new working together. You're going to have people in different places, and you're going to learn more about traffic and all kinds of things um, 
in the next 60 days, okay? And so I, I ask you to be a little bit, um, you know, somebody's going to run late one time. You know, the baby's going to throw up all over the car seat in the middle of the commute. These things are going to happen, okay? They're not going to happen every time, but I'm going to ask you to be a little bit reasonable and give each other a little bit of grace in, in taking care of that baby and doing that transport. But I think this will um, work out well in the meantime. All right. I'm going to order joint legal custody, uh, joint physical custody based on that order. Um, I understand that that, ti that timeshare is not exactly joint physical custody, but um, I make this order for two reasons. Mom's schedule, dad's schedule, the age of the baby, and with the intention that this increase over time and that this is the schedule that works at least for the next month um, before everybody can get settled in their new places get all the new equipment they need, get the baby class taken care of, you get settled into your school schedule, and we move on. Anything else, Council? I'm going to set a date for uh, return from uh, mediation, Council. Do you want me to set a uh, trial date today? Uh, I think we should. Um, and, and then the one thing I, day, I didn't day. hear you cover was our request for uh, a psychological evaluation. So. Council, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to defer two things, the request for psyche bell and the request for attorney's fees until we come back Got in it. 60 days. Those two things I'm going to leave on. I, just I, I, I am hopeful yeah. that the behavior I've seen on the text messages ends, that we go on a different path and um, we can start to work together um, in this new circumstance. I know it's a time of transition and that may be difficult. Um, but let's master that, and then we'll deal with those two issues. When we come back in 60 days for return from FMC, then I'm going to issue you a half-day evidentiary hearing and calendar call. Um, return or, from FMC is November the 5th, 9 a.m. I, I will have that done this afternoon, and you'll have e-service. Thank you so much. Good luck. Thank you. Council, right. Mr. Lytle, you'll prepare the order. I will. So, Oh, let me change but Quick, tell me in chat how you think mediation went. Okay, no whatever. Wonder, so, dark in here. That's all right. Whatever it takes. I do that sometimes too. This is a matter of Ravello versus Sangalaza, D18572482C, and R 182054 are The parties are present. Cancel your appearances for the record. Good morning, Your Honor. Sean Lytle, 11640, on behalf of Nicholas Ravello, who's present. Pamela Lawson, bar number 5044. For Karen Sangalisa, who is present. Good morning. It looks as though the part, everybody have a seat. This is on for return hearing um, from FMC uh, psychological evaluation and attorney's fees. It looks as though um, the parties attended mediation and came up with a partial parenting agreement. Um, that is prepared. Council, are you uh, ready to sign off on that agreement? I, we're, we're ready to sign off on the, on the partial agreement. I think the, the one <laughs> issue is sort of when all this is going to start. Okay. Uh, and and so there was some confusion following the last hearing just to catch the court up. I tried to get us a telephonic appearance and, and for whatever reason it didn't happen, but um, there still has been no visitation, no contact at all in the last two months. My okay. client, the day of the last hearing, which was I believe August 28th, uh, called down and signed up for the uh, baby care class. Okay. That class is a six week class and, okay. it, and it doesn't start like any week. Okay. Right. So he didn't even he wasn't even able to start the class until the middle of October. Okay. Um, he's halfway through the class now. Okay. But because of some holidays, then they take some breaks. Okay. So he's not going to be done with this class until the middle of December at okay. this point. Um, he's looking obviously to start visitation sooner than that. It, it, it had already been about four months since there had been any contact the last time we were here, and now mm -hmm. it's two more months later. So that's the real the real big issue. And then the other problem is that um, at the last hearing we had talked about exchanges happening at the parties respective homes, okay. um, and apparently now the um, defendant doesn't want to agree to that um, and is insisting on all of these sort of uh, extra yeah. safety features being put in place and, and exchanging like at the police department, which is, I don't think, warranted in this case. So, so we just need to make sure that that previous order in terms of the exchange location is correct, and then we really like to get this visitation started this week. Um, Council? <clears throat> um, Your Honor. Um, we did offer visitation um, through Donna's house. They rejected it. Um, that was also, the order that uh, council sent 
was not correct, did not follow the minutes, and Your Honor ended up signing my version of it. Um, he took the liberty of adding after the first class of the baby class, and that's not what was uh, stated. He also told me that uh, he had discussed it with someone here uh, in this department, which I don't believe was true, because I can't imagine that someone in your department would say change the order without consulting with me. That's not what I represented, Your Honor. Just okay, to, so to jump in there for a moment. That, that order has been signed. That issue yeah. is done. Tell me now, based on what he's saying, that he, he wasn't able to sign up immediately, that he, he has taken some of the classes, but due to the holidays, he won't be done until mid-December. He won't be done to December because he didn't get on it right away. If he had gone down within a few days, he would have had the proper class. But he called and signed he, up on August 28th. Not, All right, me. so counsel, based on what he's saying, you think that it's appropriate that there's no visitation until the middle of December? Is that what you... Um, unless they want to go to Donald's house, that'd be fine. What is the concern? Safety of the child. Okay. What is the concern, specifically? That he, I don't, I have no idea what they've covered so far in the class. In, in, in mediation, he also mentioned that um, the class isn't teaching him anything for a child six months and plus. He um, tried to argue that the, the a eating baby shouldn't be given water, well, the baby shouldn't be given water and food. And then the mediator um, had to let him know that a child at six months who eats needs food and water. He didn't know even the basic things to buy for a child. And if you can okay, so has mom taken an infant um, caring class similar? How do we know that she's able to care for the baby? Because she has siblings. Okay. Oh, do you, siblings? do you have siblings? Do you have siblings? No. Oh. Okay. I didn't know that. That was. Here's my concern. At the last hearing, mom was co-sleeping and thought that was appropriate for an infant child, okay? We can uh, debate and talk to about 10 pediatricians about whether or not we're going to give a baby at six months water or not, all right? So um, I think that's up for debate. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to start visitation. Donna's house is not designed to supervise um, parents who perhaps don't have the requisite knowledge or skill to care for an infant. Donna's house is designed um, when there's a safety issue, when there's concerns um, about abuse, about neglect. That's, that's not the allegation here, okay? What we have is two parties that disagree about how to um, properly raise an infant. I point you all back to uh, the child's treating pediatrician and their directive, okay? So if that treating pediatrician says, no, you shouldn't co-sleep, mom with the four-month-old baby, mom, Dad, you shouldn't supplement with water for a baby who's being uh, bottle fed and is only uh, receiving milk. Or maybe you can. Or maybe you take food at four months or six months. Pediatricians change about every year, okay, about what, what is appropriate. So there's some room um, within that. Uh, those aren't hard and fast rules that I'm going to uh, judge parenting by. So that being said, I think that it's appropriate that we begin um, with, uh, when is he scheduled to have his next newborn care class? This Saturday. Saturday? Saturday. That'll so, be class number four of six. So that will be four of six? Okay. After Saturday, when he's completed four of six, we'll begin um, the agreed upon visitation schedule. Um, it looks as though that we have a calendar call and evidentiary hearing scheduled. Um, in March. Is there anything else we need to do before March or that I need to take care of today? No, I think the only remaining issue at this point, uh, Your Honor, is going to be um, child support, which will be according to statute. And so we, I'm, I'm hoping we can just get a, a stipulation on that and, and incorporate that into a final degree of custody and get that submitted. I guess my suggestion would be maybe we just set this for a status check in 30 to 60 days um, and see if we can't just get that last little piece resolved. And, well, it looks like if we uh, utilize the visitation schedule, um, which is an interim visitation schedule and doesn't um, represent the permanent visitation schedule, neither should it represent what is a likely court outcome in this case, right. um, that child support with mom having primary physical custody and dad's gross monthly income being $1,856, 
that child support should be set at $334.08. If dad is providing the health insurance for the child, I would deviate downward one half of the uh, monthly cost of the health insurance premium upon proof shown on the company's letterhead or on some um, official document where he's receiving that. He's not providing insurance at the present time. There you go. Then he doesn't get the downward deviation. All right. Is there anything else that I need to do? Attorney's fees would be deferred to the uh, evidentiary hearing. Correct. Anything else, counsel? No, I don't believe so. All right. Counsel, you'll prepare the order from today. I'll oh, see you back. The one other thing that we do need um, uh, is that um, Karen apparently is still refusing to tell my client where she's living, um, which is a legal custody issue, but then it's going to be really important next week when we start visitation as well. Okay. <clears throat> so let's talk about... Um, uh, the address issue and the pickup and drop off location. Council, what do you think is appropriate for the pickup and drop off location? Well, my client um, uh, is not comfortable having the uh, plaintiff know her, where she lives. So okay, so th this is how we can do it, just so everybody's clear. Okay, you guys got joint legal custody. So we can do this. He's not going to tell you, and you're not going to tell him. So, heaven for no, listen, heaven forbid that there's a natural disaster, okay? There's an accident, a, a huge, I don't know, earthquake. I don't know what it is. And you don't know where your baby's laying her head, okay? Um, that's difficult, okay? We don't do that. Every single parent needs to know where their child is really all the time, okay? It's not just fair. It's what you deserve as a mom. You need to know where your baby is, okay? Where your baby sleeps. Dad deserves the same, okay? Now, if your concern is that dad would come over there for a time other than to exchange the child, I can resolve that. I can issue a stay away order today, and I will. That means the two of you have to stay away from each other's residences and places of employment unless it's for exchange of your child. Now listen, this isn't so easy to cut each other off. Your baby's six months old, okay? You're going to be together and have some relationship, albeit maybe a business relationship moving forward, the business of raising your child, okay? That means you don't ask each other, how are you? Did you have a good day? You ask each other, how's the baby? How did the baby sleep? Is the baby still teething? The business of raising a child requires that you incorporate and talk to each other in a civil manner. The way you would talk to a coworker or to a supervisor is the way that you'll speak to each other and only about the business of Julian and nothing else, right? Okay, so we need to know where each other lives all the time. That's one of the basic rules of joint legal custody, just a fundamental tenet of our law moving forward. If either of you is to move within 48 hours, you have to notify the other one in writing, okay? Now, for the exchange spot, we're coming up on a real cold period of time. And I know your child is, it's not cold now, right? But these, uh, when that baby gets all snuggled into that infant carrier, you don't want to take them out, right? <laughs> and, and I know that you haven't experienced winter yet with this little baby, but it's going to be important. Um, are, you, are your concerns about your interaction with dad at the pick up and drop off? And, yes. and those, okay. Um, She's agreeable with you um, uh, issuing the order about the stay away other than. Well, that's great because I already issued it. So good thing you oh, agree I because I just realized already did it. Did well, so yeah, I did. I'm going to enter a stay away order today. That's yeah. how I did it. Good. So um, if for the pick up and drop off, what we don't want is for Julian to have overexposure to law enforcement, okay? We don't want when it's three degrees outside, and I know it's not ever going to be three degrees in Las Vegas, but when it's cold, we don't want your cold baby waiting out at the police station for the other one to come pick him up, okay? It makes sense, and I know you don't like each other, and I don't expect you to like each other. If you liked each other, you'd still be together, right? You're not. So, of course you don't like each other, okay? Of course you don't want each other at your houses, but this is how it's going to happen for the next 18 years, okay? Um, this is how we're going to do it. You're not going to talk during the pickup and exchange, okay? Um, do you each have the same infant carrier? I don't even know if he has one or not. Well, he's gonna have one, and that was my order last time. So here's the difference, right? 
if you have the same base for your car, you can exchange the child and the infant carrier and just put the yeah. base, right? Do you understand what I'm talking about? Sure. Right? Everybody? Mom, Dad? Got it? Okay. That is easier than taking your sleeping infant out of an infant carrier, holding him up in the dead of night, and giving him to the other one, right? Do you, does it make sense for you to coordinate? Mom, what brand of infant, what car seat do you have? I don't even remember. Um, That's crazy. Uh, I know. I okay, I because you know what? When I bought an infant carrier every single time, I had graphs. I was on the consumer reports. Oh, I, do, I was I, doing this. I was at the Babies R Us. I was asking my friends. It was a gift. Yeah, it was a gift. I, I mean, I look at it every day, but. There's so many brands out there. It was a gift. Yeah. I got it. You're looking at it every day. The fact that you don't know what it is concerns me. You're a mom of a six-month-old. What car seat do you have? I'm waiting for her to tell me what the Okay, car so yeah, in the next 48 hours, I want you to take a picture of the side of the car seat where it says the name and the, the model and all that stuff, and he can just buy another base, okay? So then when you exchange the child, you exchange the child and the infant carrier. Now, do you even have an infant carrier? Yes, I do. But the, or do you have a, the, the like convertible car seat already? I have a convertible. And also, so you don't have an infant carrier? No, I have an infant car seat. And then um, the concern Okay, well, let's stop. Do you have an infant carrier that you take out of your car and you can hold him like a bucket? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you don't have a convertible car seat. You have an infant car seat. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes. So you're going to take a picture of it. You're going to send it to him. He's going to buy the base. And the car, the carrier is going to go with your child back and forth. Soon, your child's going to be going to a convertible car seat, right? But that's probably not going to happen until after winter. Okay? So what was your other concern? Well, if exchanging... So can you... Sorry, can you explain that exchange of the car seat again? Okay. It is correct right that you have an infant carrier the base stays in the car and the seat comes out and you can carry by the handle right, right? so what's going to happen when he comes and picks up on the first monday after december 1st there'll be visitation one to nine mm -hmm. so the receiving party is going to pick up that means dad's going to come to your house at 1 p.m okay you are going to have the baby already in the car seat okay at 1 p.m okay um when he rings the doorbell or maybe he'll if it's easier for you, he's going to text when he pulls up. You live in an apartment or a house? Apartment. Okay. Sorry. Apartment yeah. house? Yeah, townhouse. Okay. So he's going to text you that he's there. Okay? He's going to walk up to the door. He's going to ring the doorbell. If the baby's sleeping, maybe you guys need to just text each other, right? And then open the door and not ring the doorbell not to wake the baby. You're going to hand him the carrier. He's going to take the carrier. You two aren't going to talk to each other. You're going to walk back to the car, put them in your car, and drive away. And then at 9 o'clock, you're going to pick up. Okay? Same way. And then my concern is he, uh, well, like following that rule exactly, because you made orders the last time we were here, and he didn't follow those. I mean, he harassed me forever about a bunch of things, and I had to rem remind him the judge made this order. If you don't remember, buy a CD, because I know he doesn't. He okay, so listen. My order and what I say kind of goes, all right? You, that's it, okay? That's all. I don't understand how this is complicated. Monday, 1 to 9, receiving party picks up. Don't speak to each other. Right. If there is something about the care and keeping of this child that you need to communicate, you're going to do it by text. So, Mom, that means if he's been a little fussy, he didn't go down for his morning nap, I think he might be teething, you text that to him. I didn't give him Motrin or I gave him Motrin at this time blah 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 when you check his fever whatever about the care and keeping of julian you guys are going to text to each other okay you are not going to say out loud to each other okay we're starting you on another path of communication before you communicated a different way right about feelings and how you liked each other or didn't like each other about all these other things right now we are on this path it is business about julian so the communication style is going to be very different this time of transition is going to, when you said he was harassing me, he didn't, I told him to buy a CD. No, no, okay. So that type of communication, that is the old kind of communication that you were enjoyed. Now it is different. Would you speak to your coworker or your supervisor that way? No. Would you say my coworker is harassing me? No. Okay. The order, what I say rules because you two cannot get along, because you two cannot communicate. 
That is why I am here. Not because I want to be, not because you want me to be. There has to be a problem solver and I got the short end of the stick today. Got it? Anything else? That'll be the order. Council, you're prepared the order? <laughs> within 48 hours, or within close of business today by 5 okay. p.m. Exchange uh, address and writing. Okay? Anything else? Thank you so much. Thank Good luck. So much. Have a wonderful day. Good luck. Thank you. We'll Samantha see you back Bill in March. D eighteen five seven two four eight two C. The parties are present. Council, your appearances for the record. Good morning, Your Honor. Sean Lytle, one one six four zero. On behalf of Nicholas Rebellion, who's present. Good morning, Ken Brown, one three five seven two. On behalf of Terrence Sengalaza, who's present. Council, it looks as though we have a calendar call set for March seventh. This is Mom's motion to modify. Um, council. Um, did you have an opportunity to talk before today? We did. All right. Did we resolve anything? No, nope, never not. Okay. Go ahead. Everybody have a seat. Go ahead, Council. Well, I believe it's both of our motions. It is, and, and I, our motion can be used to as an opposition to their motion. We had filed motions uh, about two days two apart. apart from each other. But I we see had it filed now. our okay. ex parte All right. in order to any time to move it up to the state. Okay, so council, um, let can we handle some little things? Um, did Dad complete the newborn class? Absolutely. All right. And what type of formula is the baby utilizing? The baby is breastfeeding. I know, but in your motion, you say certain formula the pediatrician said was okay, and Dad's using a different formula. So what is the formula? The doctor didn't tell mom a specific. Why would you say that formula? in your motion then that dad refuses to use the formula that the pediatrician has recommended? Dad would need to talk to the pediatrician to. Mom practice. doesn't know what formula that is? Mom never feeds the baby formula. Mom has. Okay, so then why would you say dad has refused to purchase the child formula or feeds the child the wrong formula? How do you know it's the wrong formula? Because the child has broken out in gotten very sick from the formula. So how do you know that's sick. wrong if you don't know what the pediatrician has said? Well, he's, after having a reaction to that formula... You have assumed it's wrong. Correct. Okay, and you have assumed that it's to the formula. Correct, but that... that okay, come on. The really? doctor, okay, no, no, she no. took him to the doctor after she received the child back, vomiting, and took him to the doctor, and the doctor told her that it was a reaction to formula. Okay, and so at that appointment, what formula did the doctor recommend? She said she wants to know what the formula is to find out what's the reaction. I don't know what it is. Okay, so the doctor told mom the doctor would need to know what formula he gave to know what was in that formula that caused the reaction. Okay. So, so dad would have to provide whatever no, that So did was. mom ask dad? Did you? What is wrong with you guys? Oh my gosh, my mind is blowing. Your baby is nine months old. Nine months old. And you cannot text him when you're sitting in the doctor's office when the pediatrician says to you, I need to know what formula this child was given. You don't text dad to say what formula you gave him? You just didn't do anything? Please tell well, me because I, I'm really confused about what's going on. Well, the doctor said you need to go and if you can find out whatever the formula is, but it's definitely your reaction. Did you do that? Did you I, find out? No, I didn't. Why not? I this is your baby that's yeah. nine months old and he's vomiting and he has a rash and it's such a big deal. You have to file all this paperwork and come to see me. The easy answer is, dear plaintiff, what formula did you give him? The baby had a reaction. Council, hold on. Did he give? Did they give you notice that they were going to the pediatrician for this issue? No. You didn't know. You didn't tell Dad beforehand. I told him, yes. Okay. For sure I did. But you didn't ask what kind of formula? No, because um, it was after that I went to the doctor and I told her this is what's happening. These are the symptoms. This is what's happening. You did it at a well check. Um. Uh. No, emergency room. At the emergency room. You didn't take him to your regular pediatrician. Afterwards, I followed up. Yes. Okay. Oh boy. But Your Honor, one of the issues is dad okay. doesn't need to give formula at all. Mom's supposed to provide breast milk when she can. She's okay. unable to pump enough breast milk 
often to provide that to him. Okay. But the child's old enough to eat regular food. Sure. Yeah. So he doesn't need to provide any formula whatsoever. Did but the pediatrician say water is fine for this nine month old? Yes. Okay, did you tell him that? Yes. Mm -hmm. And I told him to give him food as well. What kind of food did you tell I him? I told him um, at the time he was having second foods, but you know, as babies grow now, he's in. Yeah, I. More. I understand. Yeah, I told him everything. In mediation, I told him through... Not mediation. No, hold on. So listen. Stop. Okay. Anything else that I need to know? Uh, Council? This is just about we, this we've been at this. We've oh. been at this for almost oh. seven months now. Yes. And, so, and we're going backwards instead of forwards. It really sounds like it to me. Yeah. Well, this is not acceptable. I okay. have a video. Um, I'm not sure if it was included in our motion or not but I didn't see it taking the child putting him in the back seat not strapping it in it was, the baby was in a car seat but just dropping it in the back seat getting in and driving away in the infant carrier yes but not just and then just dropping it on the back seat not strapped into anything well you know that they I'm going to object to the introduction of this testimony because it's not an affidavit or okay. any exhibit. Right. But so if, I haven't, if you want to hear it, I'll tell you no, what no, the story so is. Let's be it's, it's not locked in to, to a base. It is. <clears throat> I, I've seen the video. It's very quickly. Drive away. So it I'll clicks into I'll, the base. Yeah, so a uh, uh, baby infant carrier clicks into a base. You literally drop it in, and it goes click, click, and you walk away. Right. Um, so I, I'm real concerned. We are really going backwards. Um, I'm concerned about your communication. And, and let's be real clear. I want Julian to eat what he's supposed to eat, have the breast milk or formula that you guys want to give him, and I want him to have the best foods that the doctors give him, okay, that say that he's supposed to eat. But there has to be a level of communication, right? If Julian was 15 years old, we'd be having a different conversation, wouldn't we, right? Julian needs, there has to be such a level of daily communication between you. And let me change the word communication because it's not really communication, it's the sharing of information and the gathering of information. Okay? This is the formula that the pediatrician said you're using. You have joint legal custody, you got to give them notice beforehand of every doctor's visit. Okay? You have to follow up together. If there's a question that the pediatrician or the doctor has, you got to, in good faith, get that information, okay? You have to work together on it. There's nobody else that's going to work together on it. This is not a primary physical custody case. Nothing I've heard today um, or ever in this case has made me think that somebody in this case should have primary physical custody, okay? To the contrary, this is a case where we're having some really bad uh, communication ability. Um, Your Honor, I do want to just jump in. I mean, go ahead. I, and I apologize for taking you off track, but no. our, our motion was filed first. We haven't gotten an opposition to that motion. Instead, we got a whole different motion two days later. But our, our motion, and I know that there was some calendaring issues, and I don't know if you can look, look at it recently. I got to tell you but that today on... The, the car seat issue is a huge problem. On the calendar is just uh, mom's motion. I, yeah, I, I don't know. It's because we filed the they, next part. They day. filed the they filed the order uh, shortening, uh, order time, shortening time, and everything kind of got jumbled. Okay. But we filed a motion. They, we've got no opposition to this motion. What's the issue with the car seat, counsel? Mom's not using one. That's the issue. The issue is mom's not using one ever. We, we have we've submitted videotape. What false. they do is they pick up the child in the infant carrier. They take him out of the infant carrier, put the infant carrier in the trunk, and the kid sits on her lap. With and this is happening false. every single time. And we submitted a, a disc with videotape of several of these incidents to the court along with our motion. Well, so Your Honor, what happens well hold is on, hold on. I don't have that motion. I'm going to tell you today it's not on calendar. I don't see it. Do you see what date it's? We don't even have a date in Odyssey that it's scheduled for. Because I don't it was see a future. For the 30th and I have a calendar the call and evidentiary hearing coming up. That's it. Those are my own. The 30th, and it got vacated. Yeah. Uh, yes, so a minute order. Um, and it should have been set for today, and it wasn't? Okay. And this is this kind of tees up this whole thing. Okay. It was set for January 29th. This All right. kind of tees up this whole thing. Well, my, motion, client, my client no. has been jumping. Our motion was set for the 29th, and it got moved up to today. Their motion was set originally for the 30th. 30th. 
then it got vacated. Ah, yes, because, because this we, is the one regarding plaintiff. plaintiff okay. Re noticing. So right. I, I, I'm gonna. I need to review that video. That's fine. Because yeah. if and and I want to review whatever video you have. Okay. And let me tell you something and be real clear. I expect you to comply with the laws of the state of Nevada about child restraints. The end. I'm looking at my last uh, order. Within 48 hours of hearing, moms to provide dad with a picture of the child's car seat to include the model number so dad can purchase a comparable mo model because it's my remembrance that you didn't know what kind of car seat you had when we were sitting in court last time. I couldn't remember the name of it, but... Um, right, okay. Hard to remember the name of something you don't use. So, um, it was that important then. I I'm going to caution everybody. From what I've heard today, there's no reason to suspend dad's visitation to put dad on super supervised visitation. I haven't heard anything about that. Um, I, I, I'm real, I'm real concerned. Um, I don't, I, I, I read about how both mom and dad are at BJ's cocktail lounge before, before the pickup, why they're both there. I, 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 I'm, I'm shocked. Okay. So what, why is this happening? She saw, and then she's saying she wasn't there. She saw, she saw Dad at happy hour at BJ's cocktail lounge immediately before collecting the chat. What, what are you guys both doing? I get there early, so I, I stop there and have a Pepsi. The police came. I spoke to the police. I had to wait 75 minutes. I, 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 what are you doing at BJ's cocktail lounge before pickup? I wasn't in there. I was driving from the grocery store. So what is this? She saw Dad. Yeah, I was driving from the grocery store, and it's an open lot, and it's just a turn before you get into my neighborhood. His car is parked in there. He's not in there, and it's happy hour time. Oh, so you didn't yeah. see him in BJ's lounge. Sure. You saw his car in the parking lot. And he's not in the car. Okay. And he admits to being in there. I had a Pepsi. Okay. Okay. This is what we're dealing with. And we uh, called the cops over this? Yeah, she did. Procedurally, we have a problem here today, Your Honor, because we, we have, in our motion, which was, again, because of the order shortening time, I don't know what happened in terms of, we weren't supposed to be here until the 30th on his motion. We filed an opposition to their motion last week and treated it as a reply in support of our motion because it was my understanding at that time that today was kind of consolidated. I mean, my client is here today based on that motion that we filed first looking for, he, he wants makeup time, he wants some temporary sole custody, he wants mom to get some psychological evaluation, which we've been asking for for six, seven months now. He wants her to go to parenting classes. I mean, these are the things that are in our motion, and, and, and I, I feel like we're at a bit of a disadvantage. We filed first, and somehow because of an order shortening time, okay. now we're- I'm gonna see everybody back on the 30th at 930. In the meantime, counsel, I'm going to watch the videos. All right, we're married. And Your Honor, can I make a comment before yes, you go watch ahead. the videos? Is that when mom picks up the child, she has to feed the child immediately because he hasn't been eating with dad. So they get in the car, she breastfeeds. They don't drive while she's breastfeeding. She's breastfeeding, sitting in the car, not moving. Then when she's done breastfeeding, she puts him in the car seat. And, and the car seat in the trunk. You can watch the video. Right okay, here. well, we'll we'll figure it out when we see the video. Okay. Now let, let, I'm going to caution everybody again, because I remember I had some real concerns about co-sleeping and a lot of other issues about communication with the pediatrician that I was not sure that was going on. I am concerned again today about communication with the pediatrician. Okay. Um, I need somebody to clarify those concerns. I would be happy to see on the 30th uh, records from the pediatrician uh, because I am not, I'm unsatisfied with the, the information I'm getting. I'm really worried. This needs to be getting better, not worse. Let me watch all of those things. And I'm going to put both motions on for 9.30 on the 30th. Thank All you. right. Thank you, counsel. I'll see you then. In the meantime, Your Honor, it's just status quo. Status quo. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you so much. Do you need an order from today? I don't think so. So your appearances for the record. Good morning, Your Honor. Sean Lytle, 11640, on behalf of Nicholas Ravello, who is present.
Kenneth Robbins, bar number 13572, on behalf of Karen Sengalaz, who was present. All right, everybody have a seat. Um, this matter was continued. The courts reviewed um, the videos. They actually had an opportunity to review them again this morning because they had some additional time. Um, this is Dad's motion, um, and, and then Mom has a motion to modify as well. Um, Dad's opposition to Mom's motion, that it, we're all kind of talking about the same thing. I'm going to give you... Um, a lot of time today to uh, argue. Um, Council, go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. You know, <clears throat> and, and I'm glad that you now had an opportunity to review everything. And, and uh, I think what this really comes down to is that from the beginning of this case, um, we've been suggesting that something is something is terribly wrong in Mom's world. Council, but can I ask you a couple? And, I'm sorry, I told yeah, you I was going to no, get, and then look ahead. at me. With the, you ahead. didn't even get two sentences out. Go ahead. So I see that you're concerned of, uh, about um, her mental health. Yeah. Um, tell me um, what leads you to believe that there was a, because you seem to indicate that there was a drastic change. Right. Um, and, and your concern is that it might be um, postpartum depression. Um, what, tell me more about that abrupt mental health and behavioral change. Um, that we're talking about. I, I reviewed the videos. Um, the courts had some discussions with her, but what am I, what don't I know about sure. that that would indicate to you or your client that, th that there's something wrong, that th there's something right. amiss? So until approximately nine months ago, um, they were a happy couple. And, and tell me, how, well, be, how long were they together before the baby? No, no, before, before the baby was born, about a year, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. So about a year. Um, okay. Like, they were happy, they were talking about their future together, and marriage, and all these sorts of things that happy couples talk about. Um, baby's born, and essentially, instantaneously, um, and, and you saw, I think, in our, in our in the first motion that we filed in here, all of a sudden, I'm not going to let you see this baby, your, your family is, is crazy, I hate you, I'm going to ruin your life, like there's just this switch, right, that gets I don't know, split. but sometimes, you know, people don't like each other, that's my sure. business, what sure. am, so what sure. am I missing other than perhaps they just started not liking each other? Yeah, I, I mean, again, it's just the timing seems curiously, okay. you know, connected to, I mean, he was there for the birth of the child, I mean, it's not like there were problems brewing and then they kind of, once the baby was born, they, 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 they grew, it was like, they went from happy couple before the baby to she can't stand him the next day um, and wants nothing to do with him and is saying all these hateful things that she had never said to him before. Um, and that pattern has continued basically ever since the child was, was born. We've had, in this case, I mean, I, I understand it's not, at this point, it's kind of difficult, I think, nine months down the road to say, you know, was this postpartum, I mean, the reality is it probably would have resolved by now, one way or the other, anyway. But what we still see is this this kind of pathogenic parenting behavior that seems to have started from the day the baby was born. And, and this entire case, you know, Ms. Sangalaza has kind of been proposing this narrative of like mother knows best, and she's been given the benefit of those doubts over and over and over again. I mean, when it, she didn't know what kind of car seat she had, she didn't know what the doctor was. My client went to parenting classes you know, because she was concerned that he had no idea how to raise this child. And what we're seeing I, is what I would call projection. I mean, what we're seeing is that really mother doesn't know best. We had conversations about co-sleeping. We had, con I mean, th this whole case from the beginning, mother has been given the benefit of all these doubts. Meanwhile, my client is, has proven time and time again that he's willing to do whatever it takes to be the best dad that he can be. And, and mom keeps, you know, engaging in these, in these dangerous behaviors. I mean, the, the fact that she's not utilizing a car seat um, helps to explain why she didn't understand or didn't know what, what brand of car seat she was using because it's, it, it's apparently just not even in, in her, her orbit. Um, and so we have this pattern of, you know, when he's around, she feels like she has to be protective and call the cops and, you know, and do all of these things to, to paint him as some sort of bad guy. And all he's trying to do is exercise his visitation. 
And we had months and months and months where this baby never saw his father, where there, even after this court ordered visitation, there were there was interference with that visitation that continues even into, into recent history. And I, I just think like we've got to get to the bottom of there, there is something that, that switched when this baby was born that is making co-parenting virtually impossible. I mean, I was just looking at, it's, it's been a while since we filed the motion, but I was just looking at the talking parent record this morning in the hallway. She hasn't responded to him on talking parent the whole month of January, not once. I mean, to basic sort of questions. I mean, she's just refusing to co-parent. And again, I think it's because, and, and my client believes, having known her a lot longer and better than any of us in, uh, else in this room, seems to think that there's something going on here that needs to be addressed. There's, there's, it's, whatever it is, and that's not, we're not psychologists or psychiatrists, but we, we gotta get to the bottom of it, because the, what we can see, what we do know, is that the result of whatever's going on with her, psychologically or emotionally, is making it absolutely impossible, not only for her to co-parent, but for her to make smart decisions about how to keep this child safe. Um, and, and so I think the best way to do that, and we've been asking for months, and, and again, we've been, we've been happy to, you know, to, to accept the, the benefit of that doubt for a while, um, but now we, we're facing some real safety issues. And I, and I think we have to get to the bottom of what those are so that these parties can move forward and co-parent and, and do the things that they're expected to do by this court. So, I, I mean, I think we've kind of laid it all out. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. If you have any other specific questions for me, I'm happy to answer them. No, thank you. I'll give you time to respond. Okay. So, a couple of inaccuracies in what counsel stated was they were only together for about a month prior to Ms. Sengalaza getting pregnant. At six months pregnant, they had broken off the relationship. So, he wasn't present at the time. Uh, they, you know, they weren't in a relationship throughout the so whole hold pregnancy. So whether, then, hold on, let me just say this: whether or not any of those things are true, let me explain to you why I ask and why it's important to me. Instead of them saying you're a bad person, you're incapable of being a good mom. What they're saying is, they think there's something, um, a behavioral health issue that's going on. Okay, so. Um, that's a temporary issue. So they're suggesting that there's a temporary issue. Not that this is your humanity. Not that this is in your DNA. That you just can't be a good mom. Okay? So I don't really care whether it was together 10 months or together 12 months. I don't really care if it was together 6 months or 1 minute. Okay? I, I was asking counsel those questions because I was trying to get a sense of what was this abrupt abruptness? What else gives you concern? What What else? Is it... Because my, my worry, just so that I could be totally transparent, is are, are we capable of being good parents? Is this a, a temporary issue? And if, it's, if it is a temporary issue, let's put the brakes on this case and let you get the help you need. Okay? If this isn't a temporary issue, if this is who you are and it's not going to change, well then let's both speed ahead. Let's finish it up. That, that, this is why I'm asking these questions. So I don't want to fight about whether if it was a minute you were together or two no. minutes or six months or ten but, months. But I don't the know. purpose is that they weren't together for three months prior to the baby being okay. born. So to say that she flipped a switch the day that the She's always been the, like the this. Birth, okay, I mean, that's, he wouldn't know. No, no, so he, that, she's always that, been like this. Okay. My, my argument is that he wouldn't know. Okay. Okay. And to say that she's not util utilizing a car seat is just completely false. The video, what the video showed that they had provided was that mom was breastfeeding the child in the back seat of the car for a period of time. She gets out of the car, goes sits in the front seat while her, is it your sister? Her sister's in the back seat, straps the child into the car seat. She hands the baby to the, to the sister. You can't see the car seat through the video because you can't see into that passenger side through the window. But the baby gets strapped into the car seat. They already have a car seat in the car. So to, to say, oh, they took the car seat out of the trunk, so that means they're not using one, that's not true. Okay, There's so hold on. in the car. All right, so let's back up then. You, you should have told me this at the last hearing. If the infant carrier, the Chico, Keep Fit 30, that you're utilizing to go back and forth, is not the car seat you are utilizing, and so you place it in the trunk all of the time, and you have a different 
car seat in the car. The time to tell me that would have been at the last hearing, all right? For the record, the video is in multiple parts. The first part shows mom put the car seat on the ground, take the baby out, and put the car seat in a hatchback. Yes. However, what you can see for sure is that the two seats are up. The seats are not down. So there's no way to get from that trunk in there. So the car seat in the trunk is not being utilized. That's it's what you can see. All right. The time to tell me that was at the last hearing. So what type of car seat are we utilizing? Regular? Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not a. Um, it's not one that uh, snaps in. It's just a, a car seat that my parents bought, and it's uh, actually made for his weight transition too. Okay. okay. What our video showed was him taking the child, and and I, I misspoke at the last hearing, but you can't see that it gets snapped in to the car seat. But what you never see is the child actually getting strapped into that car seat. The child so, is resting in the in the seat and the car seat might be strapped into the base, but the child's not strapped into the car seat. Okay. There are no straps around the child. Let me let me explain something. When I set this rule, do you remember when I set this rule about the changing in the infant seat? Does everybody remember that day? Okay? I am a mother. This ain't my first time with the Chico Key Fit 30, all right? Not my first time, okay? The reason why I made that order, Mom, is because I asked you what kind of car seat you were using. The reason is, my idea was you have limited contact. I'm watching on these videos, somebody's holding a baby like a sack of potatoes, throwing them in asleep in a car seat on the ground, and this is not what I imagined. My order was as follows, that the person who had the baby put them in that car seat, okay? The, be the greatness about that car seat is it has a base, and you can carry the car seat between people. You can put it in different cars, and that base costs about 50 bucks. okay? So, Mom, you could be sure that the baby was strapped in accurately. The video I'm referencing, I saw Dad strap him in. Saw him pull the straps up, tug on him, do the whole thing. If you were utilizing that car seat as my order was, and remember that I issued that order because, Mom, I need you to listen, okay? I am concerned you are not listening and understanding me. That I based my order because you told me that was the car seat. You didn't remember, but I said, whatever car seat you're using, is it an infant, is it a five strap, is it this, is it that? I was asking you all kinds of questions. My order was based on what you were doing. I wouldn't have issued that order if you were not using that car seat. So what the beauty of that order is, the reason I make that order for small infants with parents who can't breathe the same air, is because I want you, Mom, to make sure that kid is in those snaps, that he's secure. And then you hand the infant carrier to the other parent. And the other parent need only strap, plop them in, okay? If I had known we were taking this infant carrier and leaving it in the trunk all the time and that we were not using it and that we were taking the baby out of it and we were putting a, a sleeping nine-month-old into a, a car seat in the middle of the street, I would have not issued this order, okay? So I don't, I'm going to change my orders today, okay? I'm going to change my orders about car seats. I'm going to change my orders about a lot of things, all right? So I don't want to hear any more fighting about car seats, okay? Clearly, my order didn't work. Because what it allowed us to do, it, it, and we changed what we were doing, and we were using different car seats, and we are putting car seats in trunks, is argue about whether or not a baby's in a car seat, okay? And I don't want to argue about that, okay? It's clear to me you both love this little baby, okay? And if I saw this little baby rolling down a street, not in a car seat, me and every other old mother in this town would have called 911, okay? So... That's not happening. I'm ordering you to obey the laws of the state of Nevada about child restraints. I don't have to issue a specific order that's like what I call a double dog order. I really mean it for your kid especially, okay? I tried to problem solve this for you because I, can, I have 28,000 cases, okay? Some of them are closed. Some of them have to do with teenagers. A lot of them have to do with little babies. I see this issue coming.
I knew this was going to be a problem. That's why I set a specific order. When you don't follow my specific orders, it creates problems. If you had told me you weren't using that parsing, I'd have changed my order, okay? Then I wouldn't have you exchange the infant base if you're not, the infant carrier if you're not even using it. Why would we do that? Doesn't make sense, right? I'm trying to make it easier on you. I'm trying to give you a path to success. I'm trying to give you tools to help you, okay? I don't wanna argue about the car seat anymore. Um, council, let's move on to something else. Um, the other issues about mental health, I think you've discussed and you said that they don't have any history really together and or their history is limited. And so any representation that there was a change in her personality, he wouldn't have enough information to. Right. Um, is there anything else you want to tell me? Um, going back to uh, the feeding, um, that dad's not feeding the child. And it's been a problem that the child is coming home hungry, the child is or he's feeding formula. Um, Do we know now what formula our pediatrician recommends? We didn't know that at the last hearing. Do we know that now? Have we called? Have we talked to them? Has there been another appointment? So we still don't, do, is that a no? Do we still not know what formula the pediatrician recommends? Is there any formula that is okay for the child? I, I don't talk about, I don't want to talk about breastfeeding. What formula is mom utilizing no. at home? No formula? Zero. Zero. Okay. And child mom's child. not able to supply enough milk um, for the time during dad. So the child needs to utilize formula. Is that, do no. we agree on that? No. No. Mom's not able to produce enough milk for dad's visits, but we can't agree that we need to supplement with formula? Right, because the child can eat regular foods. So dad should not give any formula. That's what should correct. he give? What, what food does he eat? Um, anything for his age. No, no, water. Oh, yeah, he can have water. I Who mean, said he, that? He, the pediatrician. He, How much water per day? Um, I, we never talked about it. We just talked about if he's eating table foods, he's eating baby foods, then he should be given water to be able to digest it. Okay, done. And mom's told him, don't give him formula. When? Give him food. When? That's through the talking parents. In January? Um, what month was mm -hmm. that? Through mm -hmm. the talking parents. Ever since the institution started. The first uh, ever time since that, what? I'm having difficulty the, hearing. That the first time that he had fed the baby formula and the baby had breakouts. When was that? You know the month? I'm um, going to say around no, October, November. I believe November. Did she say October, November? I mean, is, when yes. was the baby eating, um, when was the baby told that they could start solid foods? Four months. Four months? Mm -hmm. And what foods were they to start at four months? Uh, he started second foods. He started with second foods? Yes. So he's, yeah, he started with second foods. Um, That's what the pediatrician told you to do? Yeah. To, to get Which it. second foods? Um, any. He eats, any? Yeah, he eats Gerber, he eats uh, beech no. nut. Okay. Did the pediatrician say that you should start with certain foods, a certain color of food? No. He's, the pedi Did the pediatrician tell you any other guidelines about food? No. He said if he Zero. Can, no. If he said if he can um, start him, you know, eating his baby food, that's good. Um, so I started him with uh, baby oatmeal, <clears throat> baby cereal. I started him with the, um, at his, his age at the time, he was six months. So second foods, um, he took everything fine. You think that dad's not feeding him at all? Absolutely, because when I pick up the baby, he's hungry. I've taken him to the emergency room because he couldn't lift his head. And so when I took him there, you know, they were like, we don't really see what's wrong, but they checked him and they said, he's hungry, you need to feed him. So I had to feed him in the emergency room over there. When he, like, my baby- How like, often does he eat? Uh, he eats three meals a day, snacks in between. He so about how, how many hours does he eat? Um, Every two hours? I don't know. I feed him breakfast around 8 in the morning. He has lunch around noon. He's going to have a bunch of snacks until 5 o'clock dinner. Every two hours? At a minimum, he's eating yeah, something? Yeah, around two, yeah, two hours. Okay. All right, anything so, else, Council? Yeah. 
he says in the talking parents after she tells him don't give him formula unless you go to the pediatrician she tells him go to the when you have the child you can go to the pediatrician and find out what he can take or not take and his answer is if you don't give me breast milk i'm giving him formula or he's going to starve and right. after that she believes that he just decided to starve the child did you really believe that that's what she believes yes okay okay anything else Okay, friends, I know that the pediatrician didn't tell you that about eating, all right? Let me be real clear. Um, and I am certain that they recommend a certain type of formula. There are certain types of formula that are approved um, and recommended by the Academy of, American Academy of Pediatrics. There are certain that are not. Um, if your child has specific allergies or reaction, those are things that have, have to be dealt with. Formula is not the only um, problem or issue for a baby who develops eczema, okay? Eczema is very common in young infants. Um, it is especially common during um, the fall when we start to turn on our heaters because their skin is sensitive and that heater can dry out that skin. The doctor is first going to tell you to limit their bath, right? Because the eczema is exaggerated by baths. Make those baths short, okay? And they're going to tell you to put a humidifier in their room. And they're going to tell you all this other stuff. Okay? Eczema does not equal formula problem. Okay? Mom, you have been extraordinarily uncooperative in giving information. If there is a specific formula, I've asked you twice. Okay? What formula does the pediatrician want you to give? You absolutely refuse to do it. Absolutely refuse. I asked this question. It was an issue for me last time. You've been to the pediatrician since then, and I got nothing else. Okay? You gotta ask. If you want something to happen, name it. I've had you name every single thing. What car seat are we using, Mom? What's the schedule? Name me the formula. Do this. Do what are you doing? What food are you giving? What we're taking your lead here. You're not being a good leader. Okay? Because you're not giving the troops the information. Okay? Babies eat quite often. Babies are hungry a lot. You know what else they do a lot? Soil their diapers. Why? babies do all the time okay just because the baby's hungry when the baby gets to you doesn't mean that he's starving him you want me to believe that the the dad is not feeding the baby on purpose is withholding food water formula from the baby on purpose to spite you to be mean to the baby it doesn't make any kind of sense okay none it is developmentally appropriate for a baby to eat multiple times per day. And you know, parents, you know, every parent knows. Sometimes that baby won't eat a lot for breakfast for a couple of days. He doesn't eat a lot. And then suddenly they're ravenous. And they eat more in one day than they've eaten in weeks, right? That's developmentally appropriate for an infant, for a toddler, for a young kid. Why? Their bodies need it, okay? It is surprising when you're a new parent, right? The first time this happens, oh, the baby's not eating, the baby's not eating. And then the, you know, a week later, that baby's, you know, has three things, that, bowls of oatmeal, and you think, where did, where did that one-year-old put those, all that oatmeal? Okay, this is normal parent stuff. You're spending a lot of time blaming each other over some silly stuff that you're not communicating over, right? We're just not communicating. The car seat. You're not even using that car seat. That's why you're putting it in the trunk. Maybe you should have told somebody. Could have told him. Could have told him. He could have told me at the last hearing, right? We continued this so I could watch a video of you putting a car seat in the back seat. If you were not, if you had another car seat in there, that would have been the time to tell me so that we didn't have to come back, okay? I've been concerned about some of your parenting choices, okay? And you know that co-sleeping. You told me your pediatrician told you to co-sleep. Okay? You did. And I told you I was real concerned about it. You know how many kids died in Clark County last year from co-sleeping deaths? I do. A lot. It's not appropriate. Okay? I asked you to speak to your pediatrician about it. I'm certain that your pediatrician told you not to do it anymore. 
I was so certain that I asked you for the name of your pediatrician because I want it on the record of who said that out loud to who, okay? And they can deal with the Metropolitan Police Department about their advice, okay? So in this case, there's to be no more co-sleeping, all right? Because I'm not concerned that you're making really informed decisions about this baby, okay? Mom, you got to name a formula, all right? If you're saying no formula, absolutely zero formula, and you are not producing enough milk to supplement that, because I'm getting ready to change the custody uh, visitation schedule, okay? Then we're going to be in a problem, okay? So um, we need to talk about that and think about that. I've given you a, an opportunity to think about it. I mean, because formula is something that, that, it, that is all in, in your motion and your opposition. Mom is struggling to produce milk and supplements milk with formula. Dad refused to purchase the child formula or feed the child or feeds the child the wrong formula. But now you're telling me that there is no formula and that formula is not appropriate anymore, that we're not utilizing formula anymore, just water. Um, I'm concerned about that. That, do, that doesn't make sense. And then you had two opportunities to ask what the right, you went so far to take them to the, mer, the quick care of the emergency room because you thought they were have, the baby was having a reaction to the formula and say that it's the wrong formula, but you can't tell me what the right formula is. I'm giving you the opportunity to claim it. Tell me. Tell me what it is. And that'll be the order. Okay? Um, I'm worried that you haven't responded to talking parents in a month. Um, I would expect, look, I got to tell you something. You know I'm a mom. I had more babies than goodness, all right? I'll tell you one thing. You put that baby in the car seat and you go somewhere, especially if they're in their Sunday best, they're going to have a dirty diaper, right? It's Murphy's Law. Stuff happens, okay? There are going to be dirty diapers. To think that Dad's not changing the diaper, I'm going to issue an order that this baby's diaper is changed every two hours, whether the baby needs it or not, Okay? how it's going to be. I expect that you're going to change that baby's diaper before you put him in the car seat, but I cannot order your baby not to have a dirty diaper while they're in the car coming to you, okay? That's developmentally appropriate that we're, this kid's going to, you know, sometimes you got kids that just throw up in the car and they're just going to throw up all the time. Hopefully you don't have that, but we can't stop that. That's what's going to happen, okay? I, there's a lot of blame here, and I'm not really getting what um what's really behind it I'm, I'm trying to get to the bottom line um calling the cops going to the emergency room all the time um but then not giving the information that that's what i'm worried about um council i think these parties are exchanging too frequently um for the child's age i know we have a calendar call coming up in march an evidentiary hearing what schedule um makes sense um for them from now until the calendar call an evidentiary hearing council. I, I'm just concerned that it's just too frequent. And if, if, if breast milk is no longer an option and the baby needs water um, instead and, and there's no formula supplement, do we really need to have these parties see each other this often? This schedule was crafted for a baby who was a, a small infant that was breastfeeding. Um, and, and we gave great deference to, mom, to mom's um, concerns and, 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 and requests um, but now I think this back and forth so frequent puts these two in the same space just too often and is not I think it's making the situation worse at this point it's not helping so is, is there a schedule that you think works is mom's working as a server um, what is her schedule like Mom works Friday, Saturday, Sunday nights. Okay. So what based on that council, what, what type of schedule works? What would be your request?
around there. He, he, right now he's not having overnights. So I don't know how we're gonna do less frequent visitations if he's not having overnights. Okay, well, I'm getting, so, ready, I'm I mean, getting, she's, she's, I'm getting ready to change that. Um, I, I think it's time. I'm real concerned about what's going on. There's too much back and forth. He, she's no law, she, even for the day she can't, uh, breast milk is, is not being provided. And so that was our concern before, right? That um, he he uh, have that breast milk and have that the visitation schedule be operated under that provision. Um, these people are just seeing each other way too much. I don't want you to go to the police all the time. I don't want you to be in the emergency room. I, I, I don't want all this. Okay, this this is tough. This is a tough schedule. Um, it's unrealistic that this would be a permanent schedule. This is a schedule for a very very small baby. Um, Julian's nine months now. Um, in April, he's going to be a year old. You know, this, this is not a permanent schedule. And, and I think everybody knew that. Um, this, this was to get us through these, these tender years, tender months, really, um, and get us to a point where we got we to gotta get him on a schedule. And I told you from the beginning, this is a drug physical custody case. Um, but he is still breastfeeding, and she would like to continue to breastfeed. Okay. Anything else? So what schedule would work? She's still requesting that dad have daytimes um, on the weekends. Daytimes on the weekend? Okay. Council, what do you think is appropriate at this juncture? You know, I think probably <clears throat> at this point we need to be looking at like a you know, like a three three one or a or a two two three something where they're alternating weekends. Weekends are gonna be tricky for both of them. She just said that's when she works. My client's a professional poker player, so the weekends are an important time for him to make his living as well. Um, but you know, I think we need to either be alternating you know, a, a one day a week and then splitting the remainder of the week, or maybe alternating the weekend, something something along those lines. Council? Let me explain. I have a few options. There's only one way to divide seven days, right? So what can't I could go week on week off? That means every Friday at a certain time or every whatever day we pick, we do the exchange. The baby's with you for one week. The baby's with you for one week, and we just go, go and we just do that. Or what council suggested, I think, based on the age of this child and that a week is a very long time to be away from your child, a two two three. Which means this, one parent would have every Monday and Tuesday, every, one parent would have every Wednesday, Thursday, and they would alternate Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, that works for a lot of people who have children of this age, um, but it requires you to be a little, it requires you to have more um, connection, more uh, opportunity to see each other, uh, those exchanges. Um, I don't like it for um, bigger children, I, um, older children, I usually don't ever, um, order that I would order a week on week off if I'm concerned about your ability to um, be in the same space uh, so if council yeah, do you want to weigh would, in mom would prefer if it was just that had every Friday to Sunday or, or Monday rather than switch off to every two days or two three days okay so I try to take advantage and maximize both of your work schedules and your time with, with the baby my concern is, is that, if, you know, I would always give you whatever day off you had, I would want to make sure that you had. What you're requesting is that dad always have the time that you're working and he's working. Well, he, he's, if he's saying he's a professional poker player, you can do that at any time, 24 hours. Is that day. how it works? No. Yeah, poker. Oh, I used to be, I, I was a professional poker player for 10 years. You can play poker at any time, any day, any hour of the day. I was a professional poker player. <laughs> the tournaments, the, the tournaments are not. The tournaments are not at weekend nights. The tournaments last every day, all day. There's tournaments at every single hour of the day. Okay. Every day of the year. Anything else? All right. Um, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a two-two-three schedule. Um, Mom's gonna have Monday every Monday and Tuesday. Dad's gonna have every Wednesday and Thursday. We're going to alternate Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Let's talk about the pickup and drop-off procedure and how we're going to do that pickup and drop-off and the times. 
I know that um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday will be a little bit easier to name the pickup and drop off time. Is there a time that works better for the baby's schedule at this stage? What I'm saying is I don't want to set you up for failure. If that baby goes down for a nap every day at 2 p.m., I don't want to set pick up and drop off at 2.45. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I want you to it to work with the schedule, okay? Do you understand that? So is there a time that works better with his schedule for the pick up and drop off? On what day is that? Let's talk about Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday first. So those exchanges... Um, What we really need to consider is the Tuesday to Wednesday. 7 a.m. 7 a.m.? On Wednesday. Wednesday morning. And then it would be 7 a.m. on Monday morning. And 7 a.m. on the Friday. So let me give you an example, right? So week one, um, I think I said mom has Monday and Tuesday. They would exchange Wednesday at 7 a.m. Dad would have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, exchange Monday at 7 a.m. The following week, Mom would have Monday and Tuesday. Um, Dad would have Wednesday, Thursday. And then Mom would have Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So what happens is sometimes you have a, one week you have a longer visit. The next week you have a shorter visit because that weekend kind of bookends both of When you write it out and see it, you'll, you'll see um, so, mom's saying six o'clock is better because she goes to school. Six a.m. Six a.m. <coughs> and that's what time the child wakes up. Okay, and then doesn't eat breakfast till eight. Okay. Six a.m. Seems pretty early. That doesn't. That seems strange. That's the what time does she go to school, counsel? What time is her class? I thought we re re went in over this last time. Her school schedule. What's her school schedule? Receiving party eight, to eight pick up. She has to be at school. Mm -hmm. Eight a.m. You have a class. Okay. Is what do you do for child care? Is there someone that's caring for your child during that time? Are you mm -hmm. taking them to daycare? What What is the? Yeah, my family watches them. At your house. Mm -hmm. So can they? Can we still do the pickup at eight a.m. And, and your family could could help assist with that exchange. I'm sorry, I'd rather be there. Okay. We'd rather her not be there. And, and, I mean, again, because of just the history of this case, it seems to be... There's, there's not going to be an order that they not talk, but there's no reason for her not to be able to be there. Okay, so in many cases, understand the, the, the spectrum of what I do. I, elim I, I eliminate your ability to talk. I eliminate your ability to be there. I eliminate it being at the location of your choice. So right now, you have this many decisions to make about that pick up and drop off. If they become, if, if we keep having problems, they get like this, okay? And then you both won't be there. I'll make third parties be there, okay? At a location of my choosing, at a time of my choosing, okay? So I'm trying to work okay um is this your schedule for just this semester because it's different than your schedule last year right last semester when we talked before so just this semester and then in the summer it will be different again okay um and you remind me is it at you going to unlv okay and so you've got to be at unlv um probably before eight right to get to class at eight right yeah okay um so you prefer it at six? Are you leaving the house at six? What are you doing at? When are you the leaving? Pickup will be at six. What time do you leave the house in the morning? Um, I leave around seven thirty. You leave your house at seven thirty to get your class at UNLV at eight. But My you class is at eight thirty, but parking. Okay, so it's a, right. Okay, so you need to be there at eight. So you're leaving at seven thirty to be there at eight. Okay, can we do the pickup at seven a.m.? Okay, seven a.m. 
okay? Um, receiving, parent pickup. receiving parent pickup. Whether you're there or not is, is not really concerning to me. Um, you can certainly have your third party designate be, be there. Now let's talk about car seats for a minute, okay? So part of, you understand why I made that order. Part of the reason is what I don't want is some tearful exchange of somebody holding this infant baby and handing it over, okay? The act of handing over the baby, that physical closeness that's required by that, I'm trying to prevent, okay? So that's why I made the order about the infancy. You strap them in, you get them secure, you hand the infancy, okay? Right? So it, it gives us a little bit of we're not phys, we're not physically as close as it needs to as we need to be, okay? I'm not happy with how that baby was put in that seat in the middle of the street. I'm not I'm not happy about all that stuff. Okay, so tell me, Mom, you're using a Costco convertible seat with a five point harness, correct? And is it forward facing or backward facing? Forward facing. Okay. All right. Your Honor. Yeah. Saying that the the car seat that they've been, the one that they were exchanging, he's now outgrown that car seat. He has. Okay. So that car seat goes to 35 pounds. Your nine-month-old is 35? It goes to 30 pounds. Your, your nine-month-old is 30 pounds? It's 27 pounds. Okay, so it's not outgrown, right? Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So is it, are you, we are not going to use that car seat anymore? Okay, Dad can still use it, right? For three more pounds, right? Yeah, but then after that, what's gonna happen? What do you think? I mean, he should get his. his you own think he's seat. not going to? I I don't know. Okay, Dad, I'm ordering you to get a car seat that complies with Nevada law for a child that's over 30 pounds. I'll follow that. All right. Those type of car seats are not the magnificent infant carrier seat. So you guys are going to have to exchange your baby. And I don't like that, okay? Because you think he's starving your baby, right? If I thought somebody was starving my baby, I wouldn't want to be breathing their air, right? So I'm surprised and shocked that you want to be there for the exchange at 6 a.m. when you leave the house at 7.30, right? That's crazy to me, okay? It concerns me a little bit, okay? So let's be careful when we exchange that baby and we hand that baby to each other. I don't want to see what I saw in that video, okay? Let's be kind and appropriate. Um, anything else that I need to deal with um, that changes anything about that? In terms of the schedule of exchanges? Yeah, does that, council, does that anticipate any issues? Council, do you have any other concerns about that exchange? Is there anything that you see might be an issue that we should discuss? No. Okay. Does mom have any concerns about it that we can about the exchange? That we could preemptively strike if, if you know so. we can deal with? Okay. Can we, can we change the location of the exchange? Can we meet at the police station, like the headquarters of Metro? No. Here's why. They don't want Julian, and I know he's nine months. There's the sense that that's a safe place. It's not. Guess who's not at Metro headquarters? People who respond to incidents like this. Like, they're not coming running out, okay? It's detectives and civilian workers. Um, it's not the safest of places. Also, I'm real, real concerned about an overexposure to police for young children. Here's why. Adults should be able to deal with their uh, problems. Okay? In a way that's civil. You can disagree about stuff all day long. But we shouldn't need the police to be there. I don't want Julian to grow up, and I know he's nine months old, to grow up um, thinking that it's appropriate every time two adults disagree that we got to call the cops. Or that mom and dad are so dangerous that the only place they can be together is at the police station. Okay? So I know that a lot of other judges do it. I've never ordered it. Um, I've accepted a stipulation about it. Uh, it's not the safest place for an exchange. Um, it concerns me. So that's why I'm saying no at this point. I don't want you to be on a trajectory where we're having exchanges at, because I think you're both so dangerous, at the police station. It's not conducive for a young person. We haven't had any 
problems um, while we've had those exchanges at, at your homes. Um, if, if, there, if you want to stipulate or agree to another place, I'm happy for you to do that, but at this point, I, I think it's appropriate. Anything else? Um, just on the custody of the exchange, the schedule of the exchange. Uh, there are other things that we ask for. So I know. Just, so I, I, I want to okay. make sure that we've dealt with every issue that we can think of about this exchange. I, All right. Okay. I think we covered that. All right. Um, council, um, I am going to order that mom go to uh, infant class. At this point, I don't know at nine months if the infant class um, is the best class. Joe, can I see the list of Clark County uh, parenting classes? Um Council, I'm going to deny your request for a psychological evaluation. I, I know this is the second time you've raised it. Um, I think uh, Council uh, argues that there haven't been abrupt mental and behavioral changes, that um, perhaps undergoing a, a psychological evaluation would have um, taken the wind out of your sails, so to speak. Uh, and taking that argument away from me. Um, and certainly the court has made no secret of my questioning of some parenting decisions um, and communication issues. I am going to order that within 48 hours, um, each parent respond to any message on talking parents. It is going to be important that we do that because we have to exchange information, okay? We have to. We got to do that, especially now with this um, decision. And I think I told you before, I, I don't expect you to talk in a way that perhaps, hmm, I don't think, it, and it's important that you listen. Um, I don't think that it's, important that you speak to each other in the manner and way that you spoke to each other in the past. How was your day? That's a nice shirt. What do you want to eat for dinner? That's communication. What you two have to have is not communication. You have to have the sharing of information. Okay? So, just like when I read a police report and the police report said the red car ran the red light and hit the blue car. Those are all facts, actual things, observations, and they're in the moment. Okay, so when you speak to each other, remember those guidelines. You are sharing information to the extent that you need to to get the job done. Okay, that means Carol and I share information to the extent we need to in a civil and professional way to get the job done. I don't ask her about her weekend. I might, but it, it doesn't. That's not the relation, the professional relationship I need you guys to have. You are in the business of raising Julian and making sure Julian's successful. That's your goal of your corporation. Get it? You guys are the only two partners. You got to work together to make that happen. So if Julian has a fever, because you think maybe he's getting a new tooth, maybe not. Let me watch him. I gave him some Motrin. Then on talking parents, I expect to see Julian had a low fever. It was 99.5. I think he might be teething, okay, because he seems to be chewing on his favorite whatever. Um, but I'm not sure. I gave him Motrin, the recommended dose on the bottle, at 5 p.m. That is the exchange of information necessary, okay, so that when Dad gets him and he's slobbering and he's putting everything in his mouth, Dad can make sure and have the ice chewer or what things that for teething. And make sure that he has his favorite thing for teething and not give him a double dose of Motrin. You guys don't want that to happen, do you? No. you got to share that information so that dad can see it and say, okay. And then dad, when you give him another dose of Motrin or it seems to have subsided, you tell mom. You know, the fever went down. I checked him again. It's 98. He seems to be chewing on some stuff, but no fever. I didn't give him any Motrin. This is information for a nine-month-old we have to exchange, all right? Food and food allergies are important at this time and can show up in eczema. Sure, right? So when you introduce a new food, you have to only introduce one new food at a time. That's what the pediatrician told you, right, for a certain number of days, three to four days. So if you introduce a new food, 
got to tell each other, right? The doctor told you you can't give raw honey. You can't give certain things. You can't give this. You can't give that, right? You have to work under those rules, okay? Mom, if you get information, you can't hoard it, okay? Why? It's not good for the success of your business of Julian. You've got to share that information. So if the doctor tells you you cannot give this kind of formula, you've got to tell him, okay? To the extent that mom uh, is going to uh, supply breast milk, dad, that milk, if it's supplied to you at, at the exchange, that will be utilized first, okay, before any formula sub, uh, supplement is utilized. Do you understand what I'm saying? Is she going to provide it? If she does, okay. okay? If she's able, if she wants to, if all those things, the ball's in her court, if she does that, then you will supplement. Because we do not know what formula the pediatrician is requesting, Dad, next time you have the baby, you need to take the baby to the pediatrician. I need to know his or her name. What's the name of the pediatrician? We didn't know this last time we were here. Any, any Southwest Medical, I mean. No, that's not what we're doing. What is your baby's pediatrician's name? Uh, right now, he's just last seen Vera, um, Dr. Vera on Flamingo at Southwest Medical. At Southwest Medical? Mm -hmm. You don't, do you go, who was the pediatrician when the baby was born? Who was your pediatrician that you picked? Um, at South, well, Southwest Medical. His insurance sends him to Southwest Medical, and he can go to anyone. They um, transfer records, you know, they, I mean, sorry, they all have one database. You know, it's one big company with different um, offices. What were you going to say? I, I have a pediatrician that I'd like to visit close to my apartment. Okay, what's, is it a group? What's the name of the pediatrician? I don't know the name right now. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, most pediatric groups uh, take Medicaid. Um, some don't. If you choose to take the baby who, it seems as if not assigned to a specific pediatrician, but to Southwest Medical, which is not a pediatric office, but has r regular doctors. No, they have, they have I don't, no, no, but they, they do it all, right? They have a pediatrician, but they also have, if you were sick, you could go to Southwest Medical. Correct? Yeah. Okay. If you want the baby to see one pediatrician at a location that's close to your house, I'm going to allow you to do that, okay? Pursue it because of what because he doesn't have one pediatrician right now um you need to give mom notice in writing of the that person's name the pediatric group if there is a cost associated with that that's higher than what it would be do you pay anything for a copay you pay zero copay at southwest medical you will be 100 percent responsible for that copay okay or if you're just going to pay cash or or pay whatever it is I'm going to allow you to go there and, and follow um, their recommendations about formula supplements, about an eating schedule that's appropriate for a nine-month-old, um, and what types of foods um, the doctor would like the baby to eat, um, and in what schedule and in what fashion. Many times, they say we're going to start with greens, things only colored green because they're much easily digested. And we only introduce one new thing every three days. And we keep a chart and a schedule. Okay? That isn't what Southwest Medical told you. We started with stage two instead of stage one. Um, they didn't give you a schedule about introducing things. And they didn't give you a schedule about the color or, or how things are digested. Um, that concerns me a bit. Um, I am... The, there's two parenting classes, a baby care class that I know dad went for children ages birth through six months, um, and triple P positive parenting um, is for two to 11 um, year olds, and that's for difficult. Uh, I'm gonna send mom to nurturing parents and families. That's for at six sessions um, for parents of children ages six months through four years, it promotes positive, healthy, nurturing interactions with infants, toddlers, preschoolers, stress management, how to establish routines and handle anger, problem solving techniques, and positive uh, management methods. All right.
and a, a request that dad also take that class for six Ma months. Dad took baby he care. Took through the six months. So we'd like mm -hmm. him to take the six months and over class as well. So do you want mom to take the baby care class too then? That's not what I'm doing. The, the baby's nine months, so right. I mean, if we can both take the same class. No, that's my this, order. Or the class that um, is appropriate for his age. Okay, that's my order. Um, we coming up to evidentiary hearing. Um, I expect that you communicate on talking parents. You understand that that's one of the um, 12 things that I have to look at is whether or not you can cooperate to meet the needs of the child. Okay. Um, I need to know that. Okay. Right now I'm not seeing that. Okay. So I need to know that y you're on talking parents, that you're checking in, that we're doing that. Um, I'd be real interested in counsel and seeing medical records, okay, um, from those well checks um, from birth on. Um, those would be real important to me. Um, so important, counsel, I'd subpoena uh, Southwest Medical right now um, and uh, whatever place dad selects. Uh, because I want to know. I, I, I want to know who at Southwest Medical said continue on co-sleeping um, and and about the feeding and, and those things. It's really concerning to me. Um, um, so Dad stated, and it's in our motion, that his monthly income was about uh, $1,800. Right, and I you believe. just think that that's not true, and so you want him Correct. to file a, a new one? Correct. I don't believe that's true either. He's not playing poker at enough hours or maybe he's not a, as good of a poker player as he may think or he's not disclosing how much he's making so I'd like to see some kind of records um, that you asked for a uh, profit and loss council right. have you subpoenaed the appropriate records from casinos regarding his no but the casinos don't keep track of how much you make playing poker okay so we're going to rely on dad and we're not going to... Well, I'd like to see some kind of record. I mean, we'll, we'd have to do that in discovery, but I don't know if Well, discovery is getting ready to close because you got a counter call on March 7th. So some of this stuff, I I can tell you, you, you all have a duty to keep that financial disclosure form current with me. Um, certainly, um, we are at, we're, you know, I'm not going to see... It doesn't pay. make sense if he says his expenses are $5,000. I understand. Okay. And that's an argument you can make. Um, but I'm going to encourage everybody then to uh, get the appropriate records before discovery closes. It certainly doesn't need to be adjusted. It should either go away or stay at the current level. So I think those are the two options until we get to evidentiary hearing. Council? Mom's working 21 hours as a, as a waitress. That's claiming that his expenses are $5,000. I would say that. Well, no, I looked at it, and mom's making $1,479. That's pursuant to her FDF she filed on January 17, 2019. Dad's making $1,856. They have joint physical custody. Right. If I do the calculation, that means 18% of mom's is two sixty six twenty two, and 18% of dad's is three thirty four zero eight. If I take the difference, it's $67.86. That'll be a, the amount that dad pays to mom to that, further that, order of the court. That's believing that he's making that amount, which any reasonable person would, would not be able to believe that, based on his expenses. Counsel, I have to take the numbers that have been provided to me. If you believe he's lying, or he's fibbing, or he's padding this, then we'll certainly hear about it at the evidentiary hearing, and I'll take a look at the records, and I'll make a determination. And if he is lying, certainly I can reallocate and go back in time and change everything, reduce it to judgment immediately. Um, so that's the order that I'm making. Um, that's the calcul the statutory calculation that's required. I do need an order from today. Council, you'll prepare the order. Council, you'll sign off. I'll see everybody back for calendar call on March 7th. I apologize, Your Honor. I, I, I did a, it, one question did occur to yes. me, which is the upcoming weekend. I don't think we've decided. I, I, my proposal, again, would be that that, that should be my client's weekend. Um, I believe we were scheduled a visitation today anyway. It's, it's Wednesday today, so I'm, I, I would suggest that perhaps we do an exchange uh, shortly after court at some point today, uh, and then he has uh, this upcoming weekend, and then there will be an exchange back to mom on Monday Monday morning. morning. Council? 
So baby's with mom right now, and today's Wednesday. Um, Dad's been having the last few days, and mom's requesting that for this weekend that she be able to have this weekend. So if he is going to take him today, she's requesting that her weekend start this Friday, go through the Tuesday. Okay, one today. All right. Um, and when is the exchange on Monday as we proposed? Yeah. Or? So every Wednesday and Thursday is going to be his. I just have to decide who's going to have this weekend, okay? It literally is dividing everything in half. It'll be even, okay? I know you don't like it, but this is, this is what's kind of got to happen. Um, I think that it's appropriate that this weekend be Dad's weekend. We'll do the exchange Monday at 8 a.m., okay? Um, and, and we'll get going on that schedule, and then the next weekend will be Mom's right after that. Um, this is a down-the-middle split of, of the days. Council? Mom's saying that because Dad has had the child during the days over the last few days that she would like to have the weekend time that she normally spends during the day with the child. Normally during the day she's at school, so she didn't get to spend the, the good quality time with the child until the weekend day, so she's re requesting that this weekend uh, start with her weekend on Friday. So he's been having 21 hours or so a week of visitation since November. Before that, he had zero. And uh, even that 20-some-odd hours has been routinely interfered with and denied. So I, I don't think that the fact that he actually exercised visitation pursuant to the previous parenting uh, plan uh, the last two days has any relevance. I think this weekend needs to be his. There's, there's, some, there's some connection work that needs to go on. And, and he'll have that for the next two days. Okay, so this is going to be Dad's weekend. As I ordered, Monday will be the pickup. Okay? All right, thank you. Good luck. Thank you.